Well. Fred Keating, we were just chatting about your shoot with Catherine Callanan. Yes. And why is it that your favorite picture was when Catherine's uh, little gal came in and you shot with with her and the photo was adorable. She was a she was a sweet kid. She was a sharp kid. She had a a great sense of humor and uh, she was precocious but not pushy. Right? She just she and, and so she brought a business card of her a friend of her mom's up and and uh, and it was just so spontaneous and she wasn't she's she's a kid older than she sh She's an old spirit, an old soul. Let me put it that way. And uh, and she was a doll, and I got along well with her. I was trying not to be too goofy or kooky, but just to I don't know, just to. It was a just moment. To communicate, just to connect with her. It was a real connect. moment. It showed your your really spirited, soft, kind. How you love people. And what is of life all age? Well, Fred. This year has been quite the year. You were already saying that you're so happy with everything that you've achieved in your life, I'm but also, saying. but also you are going. You, yep. You've been a part of two Hallmark movies recently, and yeah. that's why when we came to Vancouver, we had to interview you about working with Candace Burr. We are her biggest fans and your biggest fan. She's so she was she was tremendous. Uh, I mean, a consummate professional. Uh, they're working her pretty hard. She's got her own series, and then she's got the Fuller House series, and then she's got these individual films. And she was so kind to everybody she worked with, cast and crew. It'd show up one night on a rainy night, and she'd have bought hot chocolate, had a guy come out who made hot cocoa and stuff like that in his little trailer for everybody. Show up, boom! There you had one, whether you liked it or not. And it was—I mean, it was a fun experience working with her. It you seems. Know, oh, it, was, it was fun, and it was—it was truly enjoyable. So she's—I can see why she's so popular inside the industry, and I can see why uh, people love to watch her because she's a she's a genuine she's a genuine champion. Well, we think you're a genuine legend. With it. <laughs> I know how how when we talk about how we see you, uh, you laugh because you're always still an artist. You're still growing. You're still working quite a bit, and you're not stopping till I'm not till ever for nobody. I, and I love that. My mother used to say, "You know, Freddie, there's a place for you. They just haven't caught up with you yet." And you and your say, quotes. <laughs> say yes, mother. You could just quit phoning in my location. I could be a lot more anyway. <laughs> So you've been in the industry for so long, but man, do you look good and happy. So how did you even get in to the film industry? We know that, but let's ch let everyone else know a little bit more. Before I was in the film industry, I was in the uh, live theater for a number of years. I started in stage work, which I think is a great place to start. And the first play I was ever in, I was in high school. I was 16 and, it, and our play, uh, made it through a number of uh, levels in in terms of competitions, and we were uh, up uh, in this festival that had the best one act plays around the state, the state of Michigan at the time. And it was a story, an old Eugene O'Neill story about a, a dying sailor who'd had an accident. And his friends are all coming in to knowing that he's not going to make it. And and at one point, a friend of mine came up after the play, after I had died, you know, and said. You know, Fred, there were, there were like some nuns in the last row. And they were crying when you died. They were crying. You know, and I thought, whoa, nuns were crying. Boy, that's, that's an interesting, and normally nuns make me cry. But th in this case, and I thought, maybe there is something to this theater stuff. Maybe you can move the immovable to laughter or tears by what you do when you inhabit another character, tell a story. And that was a real awakening for me. And, and, and then it's, you know, when it works well, that's great. We didn't win the festival, I think we came in third, but still, for a bunch of guys that had never done it before, uh, it was exciting. And it was in a, in a school that I was at, which was full of champion athletes and champion brains and in 
intelligent young men and scientists and so on and so forth, that became my sport. That became, in that high school, what I was known for. And in fact, it paid my way through university. I got a, I wouldn't have gone to college. I was going to go into the army. I had no job. My dad was in the hospital. Uh, uh, but I got a scholarship that paid my books and tuition, and the, and the university then gave me a, uh, got me a job in the dormitories on the kitchen staff. So I had three meals a day that I didn't have to pay for. And what I made by working in the dorms allowed me to get a little apartment off campus. I, so acting has been very, very good for me. It gave me a university education. And after a few years there, uh, I continued to get my master's degree there and started to teach at that university. And that was because of the work I was doing in theater. So... Well, maybe people should look more into doing theater then. That's very inspirational for those. Well, it, it's a great place to start because it has a lot more of a community sense sometimes than rather large TV and, and film projects. Uh, but the flip side is, and I was in it for maybe seven or eight years, is the number of family events that you miss because you're on the other side of the continent or overseas and you're happy because you're working. But I miss my dad's retirement party. Uh, I, I miss weddings of cousins. I miss births, funerals. And part of the thing that got me into TV and film was not only because it paid a lot more money for a lot less work, but also because it allowed me to well, I said to myself, if I ever get married and have kids, I'm not going to miss those kinds of events. And if you're in theater, you're working nights all the time. Rehearse during the day, work at night. When do you see your family? And when you do, because you have to be working, you don't have as much money as other folks in other jobs. So. So, uh, different avenues of acting, yes, can yeah. be uh, a different lifestyle. And being a celebrity like yourself and a working actor and an icon for sure with your voice work, um, it's been a long road. And I, I always urge people who are looking to get into film to really listen to the stories and know is that the life that they want? And so many people do. But the people that, you know, like you said, with the f not always being able to be there all the time, your work yeah. is the biggest part of your life a lot of the time, hey? I'll tell you something else. I really love theater because I love the immediate... <clears throat> I love the immediate reaction that you get from an audience. Whether they're, <clears throat> excuse me, loving it or not, you know immediately. Because they're there, uh, uh, yeah. Because they're there, or they're walking out. And uh, but the first big summer stock job I got, I had to do two shows a day for six days a week. And it very, very quickly, more quickly than I imagined, became just kind of automatic. The same lines, the same thing every night. It took about the same amount of time and energy and effort. And it got to be not that different than the Chrysler assembly line that I worked on when I was living in Detroit. And that was surprising to me because I had worked towards getting some regular theater work, but when I got it, it seemed so repetitive that I started to lose a little bit of interest. Whereas when I got into television and got a role in a television series and played a character every week, every week my character had a different story, a different problem, different adventures and I found that a lot more exciting. You love adventures. Interest. I loved it. I loved we can it. see that in you. And, and, and so uh, uh, that for me was one of the big, I just fell in love with the idea of being this guy, whether it was the, the crazy little barber repeat politely on Jake and the Kid or it was the rather not very nice uh, city councilor Jack Pierce on Da Vinci's Inquest for six years. I love the fact that I didn't know from week to week 
what this guy was going to get into, what kind of trouble he was going to have, what kind of romance he might get, what kind of... But So I loved being the same character, but I loved having the characters face different little challenges from, from week to week. That kept my interest alive and, uh, and I think probably got better performances out of me than the 200th performance of the same play. Mm. So for thinking about people who are trying to be aspiring actors, when you are acting in a series, you have to memorize different lines within every day you get a new script sometimes. That seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I, always, I always felt for movie uh, stars, they actually have one script to learn and then they're done. But for somebody who's in television, it's a lot more work. So it seems to learn a new, new lines every week. Like, how does that work? Every day. What's the prep work? Every day, sometimes. That's why when you show up in your trailer, each morning, there's a tiny little script on your desk. And it's your sides. The sides meaning they're the scenes that you're in. You have to read that because things can change overnight. You can work for six hours the previous night learning three or four pages of dialogue and show up the next day and it's changed. Then you've got a big problem. The worst problem is if you don't read the sides and you know your lines because you did it all last night and you go out, <clears throat> they say action, and you start to say a line that you've learned the previous night and everybody's looking at you like, where's that from? Well, it's from the scene. No, man, that's not. No, that was like yesterday. No, did you didn't you read the sides? Oh, it's been rewritten, man. Okay, cut. Oh, geez. All right, go learn the new lines. It's like that can be a big problem, and that that's good advice. I tell you, you only make that mistake once because <laughs> everybody's looking at you. you. Have slowed everybody down. And that's the most important thing, I feel, being an artist within this industry is knowing your place, knowing your, your role in order to... And knowing your obligation.